Hey there, everyone. Thank you for joining with us today. Our prayer point for today is united prayer. Along with a consistent prayer life, we want to pray that believers everywhere will be unified in love as we seek God together. According to the Gospel of John, there was a time after the Last Supper and just before Jesus and the disciples went to the garden where he was betrayed. And in this time, Jesus told his disciples many things, and he prayed for them. But he didn't just pray for his disciples. Jesus actually prayed for us. He prayed for you and me, which is pretty amazing. It starts in chapter 17, verse 20, where Jesus says, I pray not only for these, speaking of his disciples, but also for those who believe in me through their word. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me so that they may be made completely one, that the world may know you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So what would you be thinking about if you knew that you were about to face your own death just as Jesus was? Would you be maybe planning the next time you could get your car detailed or thinking about what you were going to watch on TV this weekend, maybe what ball games? Probably not. Uh, that's a, a serious time, the most serious time that you could imagine in life, knowing your death is imminent. So you would most likely be thinking about the things that were most important to you. That's where your focus would be. You'd be thinking most likely about the people that are most important to you and what you could do to love them and help them even after your soon coming death. If it was important enough for Jesus to think about us and to pray that we would be in unity, that we would be, as he says, completely one in unity, as much as Jesus and the Father are unified, then that must be a really big deal. It was on his mind as he was just about to be betrayed, deserted, beaten, and crucified. Wow, this must be something that's important to Jesus. And that means it should be important to us. He says that one of the reasons that we should be unified together is so that the world may believe that God sent him. Our unity is a testimony to the world. But this unity isn't shallow or pretentious. It doesn't just mean smiles and handshakes. This unity is deep and real. Just a few verses prior, Jesus petitions Father God about his followers. He says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Our unity must be rooted in our submission to God's word to his truth. Any other unity, so-called unity, will fail. We must be built together into one house on the one true permanent foundation. Jesus establishes the proper orientation of our allegiance to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then he prays that we would be unified. In his words, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So let's pray in agreement with Jesus' prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask together, as Jesus asked, that you would bring unity to us. God, unify us. We ask that you would make us one with Jesus Christ and one with you, Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus showed us how that unity must transpire, not as a blending of our will and your will, God, but rather by my absolute surrender, a complete submission of my own desires and my will to yours. Your way is right. Your word is truth. God, would you unify the church, the bride of Christ, in one spirit. May we burn together with a passion to know and to glorify you. May we serve one another, looking to each other's interests above our own. May we be quick to listen, slow to speak, and quick to forgive. And may we be witnesses of your love and grace to this world who is in desperate need of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining with us.